Friends, this is chapter 10, section 6, translating on exceptions. Um, our learning objective is to write the equation of a translated conic section. So now we're not going to be at the origin anymore. We're going to be all over the grid. And then to identify a translated conic section from an equation. So now we're going to be detectives. We're going to have to look at an equation and say, hyperbola, circle, ellipse. Um, so definitely let's look at ellipses. So an ellipse has, let me um, give you the important components of an ellipse and how you can identify it. So an ellipse has an x value that's squared, a y value that's squared, and a plus in the middle. An ellipse and a circle are going to look really similar. The way you're going to tell the difference between an ellipse and a circle is by these values here. If A and B are equal, it's a circle. Because a circle is actually a special form of ellipse. And then we have our vertices is, our vertices depend upon where, if we have a horizontal ellipse or a vertical ellipse. And remember, if your bigger number is on the X, you have a horizontal ellipse, football. And if your bigger number is on the Y, then you have a vertical ellipse, which is, I think, of like an egg standing on its top. Um, and then here's equations to find the vertice, the covertice, the foci, and how the foci in A and B are related. So let's put all this to use. <clears throat> Number one says, what is the standard form of the equation of an ellipse with vertices at 2 comma 3 and 22 comma 3 and one focus at 6 comma 3 sketch the ellipse well we're going to sketch it regardless so okay so with these types of equations i graph first and ask questions later um so we've got let me put my axes down. Here's my x and my y. Um, because this guy is so large, um, I'm going to count by, if I count by twos on my x, is that going to mess you guys up? Otherwise, we have to count out 22. Okay. So each one is going to be by twos. And this would obviously be negative two. And we'll just go by ones on the y. Okay. So we've got vertices at two comma three. So we go over two up three. I'm going to put a V for vertices, and a 22 comma 3, and one focus at 6 comma 3. So if an ellipse, focus is at 6. And that's all we can put down because we don't know what our, we know our A value is going to be half the distance. 
um, between our vertices and so let's draw that in. So our if we have if we start at two and we end at twenty two, where's halfway? Yeah, so two, what's two, 22 minus 2 is 20. Half of 20 is 10. So if I go 10 units from here, so I know my center is going to be at. Yay, because when we look at the equation, we're going to need center H and K. Okay, so we know that our, we have a horizontal, so let's write down this parent equation. X minus H squared, 1 minus K squared equals 1, divided by A squared, divided by B squared. We know that the foci, I'm going to write this information down because this is what we need, is H plus or minus C K. We know our center, we just calculated it, is at 12, 3. So I know my H is 12 and my K is 3. So my focus is at 12 plus or minus C comma 3. It tells me oh tell me that my focus is at 6 comma 3 so this val this number here is at 6. So I have to do what to 12 to get to 6? 12 minus 6. So I got 12 minus C equals 6. So C must equal 6. Yay. Because in my equation, I have H and K, H is 12, K is 3, I know what A is, it's 10, so it's 10 squared, but I do not know what B is, boo, so I cannot write the equation until I find B. But I do know, thank you Mr. Chart, that C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So that means a hundred is equal to, oh no, sorry, C. C is 6, so we got 6 squared equals 10 squared minus B squared. So that's 36 equals 100 minus B squared. Subtract 100 from both sides. Divide by negative 1. And I got 64 equals B squared. So B must equal 8. Boom. So let's um, rewrite this one more time. X minus 12 squared over 100. 
plus y minus 3 squared over 64. I'm sorry. So now that we know what b is, we can sketch our ellipse. So we start from our center and we go 8. Sorry, 2, 1, 2, Whoa. And that's my amazing ellipse. Those were ellipses. Let's take a look at hyperbolas. So when we have a horizontal hyperbola, it just means that our larger value is on the x value in our equation. So um, we have x minus h squared over a squared. The difference between this and ellipse is one little mathematical symbol. A hyperbola is going to have a subtraction in between the x squared and the y squared. So when you see the subtraction, you know hyperbola. And in fact, when you have the choice between circle, ellipse, hyperbola, par parabola is pretty easy to identify. You only have one square term. The other three, both x and y, are squared, but hyperbola is the only one with the minus. So you see a minus in between the squared terms, and you know you have a hyperbola. All right, you, we're going to use these relationships um, to answer this question here. What are the center vertices, foci, and asymptotes of the hyperbola with the equation x minus 2 squared over 36 minus y plus 2 squared over 64 equals 1. And we're going to sketch the graph. So let's start top to bottom. Our center is our h and k. And remember, it's always the opposite of what's inside. So our center is going to be at, since it's minus 2, it's going to be at positive 2. And our k value, since it's plus 2, going to be negative 2. So as I get each of these components, I'm going to put them on my graph. So my center is at 2, negative 2. So here's my center. And then my vertices are at, so I'm looking, my A value is underneath the Y, my larger value is underneath the Y, so I'm going to be using the vertical information. So my vertices are H comma K plus or minus A. So let's put in information, h is 2, comma, k, plus or minus a. So 64 is not a. 64 is a squared. So what is a? So my vertices are at 2 comma negative 2 plus 8 and 2 comma negative 2 minus 8. So let's write those out for reals. 2 comma negative 2 plus 8 is 6 and 2 comma negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. So let's draw those on here. So I go over 2 up 6. And I go over two down ten. Oops, hold on. One, two. That's right there. Alright, 
my foci is, so let's get the equation for a foci. So the focus is at h comma k plus or minus c. We have a little dilemma because we don't know what, nothing here tells us what c is. We do know that a is equal to a, and what's b equal to? If b squared is equal to 36, b has to be 6. So we're going to find our C value because we're going to go 8 squared plus 6 squared. If C squared is equal to 100, what must C equal? C squared is 100. C has to equal 10. So now we're back to Mephosi. He is H, which we know is 2, comma, K, which we know is negative 2, plus or minus 10. So let's write this for real. So that's 2, comma, 8, and 2, comma, negative 12. And we're going to put those on our graph. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yay! This is fun. Okay, so we found the center, we found the vertices, we found the foci, boom, boom, boom. Now we just have to find the asymptotes. More equations. That's easy. I can do equations all day long. Okay, sorry, my ginormous Mickey Mouse writing has required me to delete something here. So if you guys are satisfied with the vertices, we'll make some room right there. Hopefully you guys are not ginormous handwriters like me and still have room. Okay, so let's go asymptotes. That's this equation right here. Y minus K equals plus or minus. So there's two asymptotes. That's why we have the plus or minus. All right, so now we just have to fill in. K we know is negative 2. A we know is 8. And B is 6. X is X. H is... Two. And let's simplify this out. Minus a negative is plus. Plus or minus 8 over 6 reduces to 4 thirds. X minus 2. So let's convert this around. I want to put this 2 on the other side because I like graphing that way. Although that's, that is point slope. That's okay. distribute out the slope to these two items. And then one more time, I'm going to combine negative 8 thirds minus 2. And because it doesn't matter in a sketching scenario. Let's just pull a calculator and go uh, 8 thirds minus 2. <laughs> so 0.7. And it's negative. Wait, is that right? 8 thirds minus 2. There we go. Negative 4.7. Alright, 
so my asymptote is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4.7. Our starting point is at negative 4.7. We're going to go at 4 over 3. And I have a nice, I'm just going to make it a dashed line. And then my other one is, starts at negative 4.7 and goes, um, up four to the left three. One, two, three, four, one, two. So it makes kind of like a crisscross applesauce. All right, so now let's sketch. And, um, in fact, this dashed line that we made here is not accurate, so I'm going to delete this dashed line. Because when I distribute out the negative four-thirds slope, it makes this minus two a positive two. So, in fact, I have negative four-thirds x. And then 8 thirds minus 2 is minus 4 thirds because 2 is 6, no. 2 is 6 thirds, 8 thirds minus 6 thirds is 2 thirds, or 0.6. So then when I graph that, I'm at 2 thirds, and I go down 4 over three. There we go. Now my center, if you guys can see, my center goes with the center of the hyperbola. Phew! That was almost a tragedy. So now when you go to draw your ellipse, your vertices, well, I deleted it. What were the vertices? It's these red guys, right? Yeah, that was, that was in 10. Okay, so you're, from your vertices you go out and then you follow, your graph follows the asymptote and same here. You go out and out and your graph follows the asymptote. Alright, so for this one, um, I promise when we get to the asymptotes I'll do it the easier way for you. Um, so we're going to take a look at this equation. We're going to find the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes. And then we're going to sketch. Then we're going to double check on a graphing calculator to see what that is. All right, so we have an issue um, with this one. And although this is not a translated equation, but I, w I just want to real quick show you how to deal with um, when you have a number on the right hand side, everything gets divided by it. So when I simplify 9x squared over 36, that simplifies to x squared over 4. 4y squared over 36 simplifies to y squared over 9. And 36 divided by 36 is a 1. So then once I do that division, I have my, the equation of my hyperbola. I can identify A, B, and the asymptotes. I'm actually going to fast forward to the next problem because I want to show you ones with a center. But I just wanted to backtrack onto that.
let's do these two problems together and see where it takes us. So our, we're going to identify each conic section as an ellipse or hyperbola and sketch the graph, give the center and the foci. So the first thing we have to do is split this up into x's and y's. I'm going to leave a space because, oh yeah, it's happening. I'm completing the square. Okay. So the this x value, it's pretty easy to complete the, the square here. We're going to take negative 6. We're going to divide it by 2, which is negative 3, and we're going to square it. Just not. This guy gets a little bit more difficult. I have a 4 out front. Boo to you 4. So I'm going to factor him out. But watch what happens when I factor him out. So I'm going to take this 2 value. I'm going to divide by 2, and I'm going to square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. However, I'm not going to put 1 right there, because I am actually multiplying by 4 first. So I'm going to go 4 times 1, which is 4. So each side gets a 4 added to it instead of a 1. Alright, so let's rewrite this. This is a perfect square because we made it, because we're awesome. So it's going to be x minus 3 squared. And this is going to be 4 times y plus 1 squared. And it's going to equal 9, negative 9 plus 9 plus 4, which gives us 4. Just from this information, can we identify it as a ellipse or hyperbola? Those are two options. All right, so it is an ellipse because of the plus sign in between our x and our y terms. So, but we need to put it in standard form, so we're going to divide everything by 4 so that this right hand side is 1 and we get x minus 3 squared over 4 plus y plus 1 squared. I'm just going to put it over 1 for fun. Alright, so now we know the center. So we know that the center is at hk. And that's at whatever's the opposite of the values in parentheses. So if we go to sketch our graph. So we go to sketch our graph and we put a center at 3, negative 1. And then our ellipse is going to go around that. We know our a value is square root of 4, and our b value is the square root of 1. So I know that I'm going to go, since it's the x-axis, um, square root of 4 is 2. So it's out to this way, out to that way, and out 1. We have a nice little ellipse. So I want to find C and for an ellipse, C squared is A squared plus B squared, which is 4 plus 1. C squared is equal to 5, so C must be equal to square root of 5. And the foci are at 
All right, so the foci is that for a horizontal ellipse is that h plus or minus c comma k. So we are going to put in our values here. So the foci are at h plus or minus root 5. And in fact, we know h is 3. And k is negative 1. Get the center in the foci. I did it. Thank you.